episode 75. This isn't 75, but we could tap into it, though. It's not? Nah, because we just did 74. Kings was 75, so this be 76. We first, right? Okay. Or we can drop Hella Black today. episode 75. <laughs> no, nah, let's drop. This needs to drop today. A thousand percent. So I know You're now last tuned episode in. we said 75. Yeah, so this is 75. You're now tuned in to Hella Black episode 75. Episode 75, message to the people, you feel me? Shout out to all people, all black people, rising up by any means necessary against this fascist police state, yep. this military state, nigga, all power to the fucking people, you feel me? So we want to just send our love to all black people, black trans folks, black queer folks, you feel me? All the niggas fighting in the streets. We black women. Love. Black women, bro. Black, black disabled, disabled folks, folks, come nigga. on. You feel me? It's important in this time, you feel me, that we center the niggas experiencing the most oppression from this fascist military empire. Also known as United States of fucking America, nigga. Fuck America, nigga. Death to America. That's it all gotta go. Coming, bro. It all, all gotta, go. gotta go. You so, know. you know, we appreciate all the support, too, that we've been getting, you feel me, with People's Breakfast Oakland, people's programs, and the, the bail support that we're doing. You feel me? We, we appreciate all the love, all the solidarity of people posting, people donating, you feel me? So thank you for fucking with us, tapping in and rocking with us. That shit means a lot to us. And that means a lot to the people, you feel me? We as grassroots organizers in the field. You feel me? We in the trenches and we've been in the trenches. We've been doing this work. So it's, it's great to to get this support. You feel me? Because without without organizations, you feel me, this this moment will be a moment and not a movement. And we gotta create a movement. So all power to the people. We thank we thank everybody, you feel me, for, for rocking with us and continuing to rock with us and we got a lot of uh, important messages we wanna get across in this episode and yeah. just in general. Thank you for thank you, you know. So I guess we're supposed to start with Black Joy, but it, it, it's it's kind of hard. We to, can free Black Joy. I ain't even gonna <laughs> lie. Like it would be it would be fake. I guess. Oh uh, yeah, it would probably be fake if I'm I'm make some shit up. It it, it, it wouldn't be fake because like there are bright spots of what's been happening as of late. But in terms of the support we've been getting, yeah, I think like that's super dope. I'm super proud of. And hell was stressful to navigate all the support as well. Yeah, I think sometimes I don't know. Like so, I was gonna say I'm super proud of PBO, like our core team. In the way that we've essentially built out a whole new program in a matter of a couple a couple of days, and I wish you know, like we talked about it last night, um, I wish niggas could have been proactive as opposed to reactive and had this bail fund set up prior to these uprisings. But you know, it is what it is. It is what it is, and we were able to to work through it. Um, so I think there's joy in that moment and and seeing seeing niggas show up and seeing you feel me. Yeah. We're able to like build a process for our people in real time. You feel yeah. me? It's like while we didn't call the protest. You know, and it was a lot of these white anarchists out here calling these protests, but, you know, black youth getting caught up in that and system. Un- and unorganized black organizations. But Yeah, know, that's another story, which we'll get to. Um, you know, black folks rightfully having rage, and, you know, if these white niggas, white anarchists breaking windows and shit, and they get away, and the police is coming from black niggas first. So it's important that we get our young niggas out the pen, or out, you feel me, out Santa, Santa Rita, you feel me, and yeah. niggas is getting <clears throat> put on trumped up charges, you know, so we... You feel me? We f- we for the people, and that that's why we getting our people out of this this fucking Santa Rita, which is one of the deadliest county jails in the country, which has coronavirus running through it rampantly. You feel me? So, yeah, it's it's been uh, the amount of support I'm grateful for, just because of the impact that it's been able to have on other people. Uh, and while it's been a, a ton of work for us, I feel like this is like we already know, like we do our reading, we know we know our history, we know that like nigga liberation work. It's laborious work. You feel me? It's sacrificial yeah. work. And that's what you got to do in the name of preservation and liberation of black folks and Africans globally. You feel me? You know? it's, it's that survival programs. You feel me? Survival pr- pending revolution. That's why this bail program is it's literally a survival program. You feel me? I'm pretty sure the Panthers had a program very similar as well. You know what I mean? So it's like we got to keep our keep our people out of the, the system. You feel me? To avoid getting captured by this fascist pig state that we is living in under military rule. Right. And we we know that these curfews ain't nothing new, especially in Oakland. Libby Shaft has done it before. But we we still is in some unprecedented times. Yeah. I, I would encourage any organization out there, no matter how big, no matter how small. Um, I know right now it might be it might be hard to, to build out new infrastructure, but I think every group should have a bill fund, bro. Or at least be a t- partner with another group that has access to bill funds. A thousand percent. This shit is so important because we know like black folks get locked up on a daily, not yeah. just 
you know, as a result of these uprisings. Like, I think if we can get black folks out every time they every time they get arrested, we should. Yeah, and I think on, on that note too, it's also important, like really avoiding capture at these protests, bro, because it's like we're gonna be funding hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars into the bail system, and those that same money can be used for our own survival programs, right? So it's like we've we have already to be done very it. Just you gotta strategic. think about you gotta think about one group in one city in one county. We've already pumped hundreds of thousands into the jail system. So I like, think about that nationally. Um, and like that's why I'm saying, like, bro, capitalism is a hell of oil, oil machine, bro. Because like, even when we able to do things like liberate people, we are still pumping in money into the same system that has us oppressed. The same system we is trying to abolish. The same, me? the same system that's bringing the military in. That's the money that we use, and it's gonna be used to fund the military. The same motherfuckers talking about um, defund the police, abolish the police. The same systems that are used to to support to support the police and keep the police in power are the systems that we invest the money into via the bond system, bro. It's fucking nuts. Period. It's it, it's nuts, and I think that's that's part of our politics. Then is like literally being avoid capture at all times. You know what I'm saying? And we're gonna go get into that a little bit more and talk about like what does it actually mean to have like guerrilla tactics at these protests? Yeah. You feel me? What does it mean to have a sense of militancy at these protests? You feel me? What does it mean to have to retreat at a protest? And and not just in the name of like you know getting arrested, but also trying to avoid as much violence and as much physical. Um, like pain as you can right like you talked about being tear gas in 2014 that shit is not cool and i think we in a time right now that shit knocked me on my bro, ass Nigga, I, think, I got asthma yeah you got to realize we in a time where it's just it's a spotlight and a hyper visibility on movements ac- across the country and i think at, in ways that can get glorified bro and people who aren't necessarily on the ground or people who like white folks or you know who are going to these protests and, and posting shit or sometimes even black folks who again that might be new to this and haven't have really had yeah. to experience all the violence that's, that's and that's, they have good meaning, yeah, like but you, they're not educated on the system of the shit that they're gonna face you or have to experience the real violence of it. It's, it's a it's yeah. a chance for the shit to get lost in translation and, and be viewed as like this glorified thing. And trust me, my nigga, like if you listen to Hella Black Podcast, you understand that we have a black radical approach, like we understand that we war is pan Africanist, period. We understand we believe that, nigga, in revolution, nigga. by the by the gun, we believe by the in gun, it nigga. by violence, by the hammer, nigga. but we also believe in being tactical. <laughs> Period. Like the thing about the thing about this shit is to leave with with the least amount of casualties as we could possibly have. Because we know we're gonna have casualties. And you talk about tactics, bro. Like if y'all, I think a lot of people have been tweeting recently about uh, George Jackson, Blood in My Eye, which I think everybody should be reading or should have read. Like you need to read that book. A lot of people have been talking about it. And the, the Panthers, they talk about guerrilla warfare. They talk about you know not the backing down. They they talk about not backing down, not retreating. But there has to be a strategy to it. You feel me? There yeah. gotta be. Part of the art of guerrilla warfare is striking and then retreating. <laughs> you feel me? And well, not getting arrested. And not getting arrested and avoiding <laughs> capture and then blending back into the people. <laughs> that that's part of guerrilla warfare, right? So we have to understand, you know, while we're our people are not ready for that, I don't think. You know what I mean? Those tactics can still be used within our protests. But me and you have been having so many like conversations around, you know, like, all right, are we actually guiding people the right way? Cause so much of what we talk about is revolutionary and violence and all this, but we even talked about this on episode with Q recently, like revolutionary violence. It's and organized. It's organized as fuck. It's tactical. Like, it's organized and it's tactical. And I think sometimes people can just think that like, all right, it's always just being ready to go. And, that, and like sometimes it has to be that way. Sometimes you have to be reactionary. But yeah. there it gets to a point where we've seen it around the nation, bro. These protests and the the police, National Guard have become increasingly violent as the days go by. And with that said, like as they change their approach, we have to change our approach. I haven't seen any, I haven't seen many um organizations and protesters changing their approach which is why you see shit happening like where, where protesters are getting boxed in or where you see motherfuckers allowing the police to kneel for five minutes and then right after they tear gas they you, you motherfuckers bro. they sending you up into a motherfucking trap i mean the only niggas i really been seeing was like telling niggas to like go home and be tactical it's like they sean and them niggas in the a niggas like, who have experience who have experience on multiple fronts on the ground bro it's like they sean and them were doing fucking Student organizing, right, and, and and posting demands for the campus. Then on top of that, they were doing houseless organi- organizing in fucking Atlanta. So niggas have had ex- like we know, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's so it's like I've had the experience of being in the streets in 2014 with Mike Brown, Eric Garner, Sandra Bland. You feel me? Like when they had a curfew order here before in Oakland. Like I've seen what OPD has done. I've seen what Alameda County Sheriff has done. I've seen what the CHP has done. And we in a position where the National Guard is mobilized in California, where they got the snipers on the roof in LA. 
You feel me? Like that we in a different predicament to where niggas have to be strategic, bro. And we not saying don't be in the streets. That's not what we saying. If you fuck with hella black, you know that's not what we saying. Right? We're saying come with a tactical approach. Be ready to resist. Don't be ready to move. Be ready to run. And know because who you, you following. No. <laughs> know who you following, know, know who, who you with. The protest. Know who politics is behind this shit. Because niggas is just out here with no with no guidance. And the reason why a lot of niggas aren't tactical is because they're missing the politics behind their work. Or they read George Jackson and just love saying George Jackson's name, but don't want to follow the theories. you got to be picking and choosing which parts of and the like, actions yeah, you gotta of pick George and choose Jackson. Exactly. And that's what we have is a lot of niggas pick and choose what they like about a radical politic, right? But then they use it to have some type of fucking liberal reformist-ass politic. A true revolutionary politic is always going to have guerrilla tactics. Period, bro. A true revolutionary politic is always going to be organized. Name one revolution that has happened that has not had an organization. Name one. Bro, you get, that you, has not had an organized front from Cuba a to Venezuela a to success, Ghana. A successful overthrow always has organization. Period. Always has organization. If and we're it, trying to do a revolutionary socialist revolution <laughs> it, it has organization it has structure it has marching orders bro i'm urging and who knows what the next few days will be like and we dropping this as soon as we finish recording but i'm urging anybody that gets to a protest and sees folks willing to work with the police to march with the police to kneel with the police those people do not have your best interests at heart those niggas are ops you cannot reason with the police. You cannot name in the history of, of, of humankind where begging and pleading for your respect has got you somewhere. Name <laughs> any time, even in the civil rights movement, when niggas did sit-ins, what happened? Them niggas got their ass beat. So, I, so again, we are saying go in the streets and just, if you can, be organized or just be very real with yourself. Yeah. And for folks that are organizing protests, be transparent with, your, with motherfuckers. Don't guide them under under false me. pretenses. You feel me? Like, come on. <laughs> I like what well, we've been preaching the whole time. Like, hey, if you go outside, you know, we can know that you, you might. Yeah. This is the process for the bail, though. This should take a little, take a while. And that's the thing we talk about the bail fund. And I'm hoping, like, if somebody listens to this, they can come with some some ways to assist us to make our shit more efficient because we've only had so many people that we've been able to talk to to help us with it. But in general, nigga, separate from the the the, the jails being overcrowded as fuck, yeah. right? When you got sixty people being arrested one night, ninety eight people being arrested the, the other night, then one hundred and two being arrested the, the day after that, right? Like prior These are to black that, folks, nigga, that's just black. We only we only are bailing black folks, so we see it. You know what I'm saying? So when you fucking when you look at the numbers um, of jails being overpopulated prior to the uprisings, the bond system was already a process that took super fucking long. Design so by bit, design. So now it's like, all right, niggas put a politic behind it, and on top of that, you bringing in more bodies. Like, bro, this shit is just so long during that's a pandemic. That's being left out. It's just, you know what I'm saying. So that's why, like that. That's why political education, right, becomes so important. That's why protest tactics become so important. You feel me? Like we have to understand that when you are going to a protest, you are protesting a militarized state under military rule. You are protesting niggas with tear gas. You are protesting niggas with flashbangs. You is protesting niggas with ARs. You is protesting niggas with chops. You feel me? That is the condition you are in. And most likely, you are out there without the shits. And on top of that, nigga, you are black. You're going to be treated way... I, like, I, I love motherfuckers be posting all the uprisings in different places. I'm like, bro, black skin anywhere is going to get you treated differently. Black skin anywhere across the world is gonna get even you if you differently. unarmed, even if you go up, y'all trying to need to keep that in sing mind. kumbaya with with these pigs, and you take a knee with these pigs. This nonviolent shit will get your ass beat. So if you outside with these protests, bro, you got to be tactical. You got to be paying attention to the shit that is going on around you. Have a you got to be able to move at a certain time. You got to be able to cut at a certain time. You feel me? You got to be able to make barriers at a certain time. That's bro, why I like have a transportation you know, team. Bro, nigga. Have a fucking first aid team. Have niggas listening to the police scanner. You feel me? It's like ways to do this shit. My homegirl, you feel me? She, uh, you know, she, she from Sudan. Like she sent me some information about the shit that they was doing out there when they was uprising. It's like, bro, they would build fucking barriers with tires you burn the motherfucking tires and then cut so that the fucking police can follow them. you feel me it's like that's a guerrilla tactic in itself right there and those are the certain tactics that you got to use especially if you were out armed outgunned and quite frankly we're out organized and that's and that's and like bro i understand because it's like it's 
we talk about it already, right? Like when you you talked about it before, like bro, when I was young, bro, I was, and I was angry, I was just doing shit, bro. I was mobbing, bro, and I was also me. We all, we all been there. I've I been there. You feel me? That's that's where I'm coming from. Is a place where I'm like, yeah, nigga, I took the freeway. Niggas almost got arrested, but did the dash type shit. You feel me? Like, but niggas didn't know we was on the freeway. Fuck the police, nigga. Fuck twelve. You feel me? Getting hyphy on them niggas. Not realizing that nigga, I could have gone to jail that night. Was I prepared to go to jail that night? Hell no. <laughs> it was me and two of my fucking football partners. We was not ready to go to jail that night. We had no idea because we was young, without education, but had anger and rage. And that's why this political education process becomes so important because we have to know how to direct our rage, direct our anger, and be tactical. If we say abolish the police, why are we walking our people into traps set by the police? And that's and and this is why, bro, it's important to know who you organize and with. Like, and this is like this is why well, some of this shit is gonna be able to be applied to the moment. And a lot of the shit that we're telling y'all is like movement work, strategies for for down the line. Cause it's like, bro, you gotta when you are when you are transparent and you have a full understanding of like, okay, what can happen? And even if you don't have the strategies in place, but me, you could be like, all right, nigga, when we go out here, yeah. it's a chance we could die. And we made that decision together, then I know. I can know what I can expect from you, bro. I know how you're going to move when we out there. If you out there with a bunch of niggas you don't know, when them first bullets start flying off, then motherfuckers start getting stampeded. Motherfuckers just start getting boxed in on both sides. It's like, bro, you wasn't even smart. Like, there's a way to go about the. It's a way to prove your point yeah. and be tactical and preserve yourself, bro. And the one thing, you know, we've seen with the Hong Kong protests is like they had this saying, I think it's called be like water. Being able to move, you feel me? Being able to, to cut, right? So it's like they was paying attention to them police scanners and shit. You're right, and they hear about the police about to come into a certain neighborhood, a certain block. Guess what happened when the police showed up? They was gone. The thing about bro, people <laughs> love like glamorizing Hong Kong. Those niggas were so organized, bro. And you know, we might not agree with <laughs> some of you know, or their their stances and their their nationalistic stances to to America but and asking Trump for help. But if you look yeah. at pure tactics that yeah. they was using. And we don't agree with the nationalistic stances. Let me be fucking clear, actually. <laughs> so somebody don't take my words and say, oh, yeah. I'm having a run. I'm like, All right, let me make sure I say exactly <laughs> yeah. what the fuck I'm saying. Right. <laughs> so, so you niggas know, man. Yeah. Don't come at me with no bullshit. But, you know, looking at the tactics that they was using, bro, they was organized, bro. They was able to cut in a matter of seconds. You feel me? They had assembly lines basically passing gear and materials to the people. You feel me? It's like right now we have to realize that we is in a moment. and But we have to be organized to make it a movement. Especially if we finna be out in the streets. We need to have the gear that is needed to, to do this. We need to have the barricades that we can set up to do this. You feel me? There's a lot of shit that the infrastructure that we need to have. We need to have clear leaders, bruh. Because these white, white anarchists, bruh, them niggas do not give a fuck about black niggas, bruh. Them niggas be anti-establishment, but not pro-black. Exactly, <laughs> bruh. They're, 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 they all say... Y'all is not our fucking friends, bruh. And if you're real, you will pull up and actually take fucking marching orders from black people, from black radicals. But y'all want to create y'all fucking anarchy in a city that y'all ain't even fucking live in. So we got issues with you niggas, bruh. Period. My my thing is like, you cannot say this enough. Like, my nigga, we want to, pres- we understand shit got to happen. But the goal is to bring as many motherfuckers to liberation with us as possible. And it's also to create the infrastructure for something to last and be sustainable and not just be a moment. Like, yeah, we can go out here and catch and capture the eyes of the nation for for a brief moment. And then once this shit dies down, what happens? And that's exactly we didn't lost lives. We didn't got we didn't lost lives. We didn't lost people. Here. And we don't got the infrastructure to and maintain we, and to mo- maintain the momentum. Look what ha- we have to learn from the lessons that we we had in twenty fourteen, bro. Where a lot of niggas stopped organizing. A lot of niggas was killed, right? And there was no movement, bro. It was a moment. Like, it was. it's hard to call it a movement, bro. You feel me? It, it shit was a moment, right? And without organization, without black radical, black revolutionary socialist organizations, pan-Africanist organizations, right? Understanding that we is organizing under the conditions of taking our people to scientific socialism, you feel me? That's, that, that is a solution for us, and that is a solution for our people. And that's what we have to be on. Period, bro. That's what we have to be on. And we have to build organization. We have to build tactics, bro. And we have to be organized. There ain't no movement without organization. There ain't no movement without being organized, bro. And that's where we need to step in right now. And we have to understand, bro, we is fighting up against 400 years of oppression. And I understand that there's been more protests than we've ever seen in our lives. But we also have to look at what's happening to these at these protests. 
and adopt or and adapt and analyze the next situation. You feel me? If we is in a in a war, bro, this war ain't gonna be over in two days. A revolution ain't gonna be successful in two days. A revolution ain't gonna be successful if we have niggas with fucked up politics, bro. I'm about to say war is not even the only aspect of a revolution. Like so many people are getting caught up in like, oh, let's like let's. That, so many people are getting caught up in the fight, in the protest, and at the same time at a at a at a fucking um, protest that's supposed to be about f- uh, police brutality, you got motherfuckers kneeling with the police. And on the opposite side of that, uh, uh, when niggas talking about black power and black liberation, you got black men assaulting black trans women. Like, that for me is like, all right, y'all want to act like liberation exactly is tomorrow are. in theory, but in practice, liberation is not tomorrow. So why are y'all so quick to move when we got all this other work that needs to happen? The police could be going tomorrow. Y'all niggas still ain't checked your transphobia. Fat phobia. White supremacy. Homophobia. Could, yo, classism. White, white supremacy. Yo, ableism, come on, nigga. Come on. White supremacy under the guise of white skin could be going tomorrow. But have black people check their internalized anti blackness? And I say this all the time, bro. I say this all the time. It's a hypothetical situation. <laughs> if all white people died tomorrow and these same systems were in place, we will have white supremacy. We will still have black cops. Putting their necks on, on black on black kids. We will still have we will, we will still, still have, have black oppression. cops pulling black college students out of the car, tasing them and beating the, and beating the living shit out of them. We will still have black folks getting on national TV and saying, "Oh, I have black my, my parents were cops, my uncles were cops." Period. We will still have black folks saying we need to invest in, in we, we need, we need to, black we need, we need the black dollar to, to liberate the, us. We need a black credit card, bro. We are so far from liberation. Which needs to be understood. Therefore, niggas need to organize like we are far from liberation. Niggas need to move like we are far from liberation. Mm-hmm. That's all I want to say. Niggas like, oh, we got to keep mob. We got to keep being in the streets. Like, bro, that is a very necessary element, but it's only one piece. It's only one, one piece, piece of the puzzle, bro. And that's where you got to think about survival programs, bro. Like, that's why I'm very critical. Like, of course, we're doing bail support, but right, we have a critique of bail as well. Like, why march yourself into a protest knowing that you is finna get arrested? And you're feeding this capitalist system that you say you hate so much. Adjust the tactic, right? Imagine if all this money that was being used for survival programs or being used for bail is being used for survival programs, right? Where we're able to provide housing for black trans homeless women. You feel me? Where we're able to provide food, shelter, clothes, material impacts for our community. Niggas ain't worried about no revolution if they can't pay their fucking light bill. Right. So we really have to build these survival programs pending revolution, because we also know that nonviolent uprisings, which this pretty much has been a nonviolent uprising, even though there's been rocks thrown and and, and windows smashed. I still consider yeah, that a couple cops that got smacked a couple of years in Oakland, too. Um, but it, for the most part, it's been it's nonviolent. Been nonviolent yeah. And who was dying? <laughs> who was getting incarcerated? We are right. Yeah. We got to understand if we study our history. If we study revolutions, there ain't no revolution without bloodshed. <laughs> there ain't no revolution without revolutionary violence. And if you study the history, if you study the black radical tradition, if you look at these decolonial movements that happened on the continent in Africa, if you look how Cuba got free from the chains of imperialism, niggas had to bear arms and fight for their freedom. What happened to fucking abolish slavery, quote unquote, right? The civil fucking war. And we have to be honest with ourselves where we at, hold ourselves accountable, and move accordingly to a politic that brings us closer to revolution. And I'm not just talking about guns and being armed. I'm talking about addressing the transphobia. I'm talking about addressing the classism, addressing the homophobia. We have to address these systems, all of these systems, bro. It's like we was talking with uh, Miriam. White supremacy is like an octopus, nigga. That motherfucker got hella tentacles, nigga. We cut off one octopus tentacle, there's still a whole bunch of them. The and them motherfuckers gonna regrow, nigga. That's what's finna happen. Or niggas just gonna recreate the, the police in another way. Like, <laughs> it's, man, that's, that's like, again, I'm proud of, I love seeing like radicalized minds. I love seeing folks at least being this able to- This is a great to, moment, bro. I love, this is a I love great people, moment. I love seeing people be able to, being able to recognize racism. I love that shit. But I need you to know this is the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more work to be done. And you need to approach the way that you are moving with the with the perspective of there is so much more work to be done. Facts. What that goes for niggas out here acting like the allies and shit too. Just because you're able to, just because you want to take a knee and just because you're able to recognize racism and the police brutality does not mean you are able to divest check. from your fucking capitalism, you bro. You don't ain't mean gonna you're ready to divest check from your, your anti blackness in its entirety, my nigga. It's not ready. It don't mean you're ready to give up your power 
all you like yeah giving some money giving up money is honestly it's not really giving up power niggas ain't empty their bank account niggas ain't open up their homes to motherfuckers you niggas not really ready y'all not really ready for and because y'all like the political education that's the number one thing so let's let's get it clear that's why political edu- political education is important and on every aspect bro it's important to be able to you know say that you don't know enough understand that you don't know enough we don't know enough that's something we need to check first like we niggas, don't know enough, niggas who nigga. don't listen niggas who are new to this because we both have been yeah. super active in the last few days and i feel like we our get new listeners and, and new people yeah. bro if the, we are not the other i think a lot of times we try to talk like we have work to do we are intentionally doing the work ourselves we're trying to do the work with y'all i'm addressing my Period. own homophobia my own transphobia you my feel own me? anti-blackness i'm checking that shit every day we have to so if holding you admire, ourselves accountable. If you admire us and we telling you right now, we are nowhere near the politics that we preach. We are you aren't too. You, you <laughs> aren't either. Yes, we are working towards them and yes, we've gotten better. Yes, we've learned. But niggas do not live and breathe. Niggas are not able to function in a way that per, that perfectly aligns with their politics every day. And probably none of us ever will. But it's about being able to check yeah. that shit, atone for that shit and move accordingly. Yeah. I remember on my mom's fridge, she had this little uh, magnet that said, like, always make new, always make new mistakes. Don't make the same ones. You feel me? Learn. Grow. You feel me? Understand that we will never know enough. And be woke enough to know that you'll never know enough. And understand that learning is always a process. And we always is going to be learning and deconstructing and learning. Embrace that shit. Because that's the shit that's going to get us free. You feel me? We got to liberate our minds as well as our bodies. You feel me? If we're going to liberate ourselves from the constraints of white supremacy and imperialism. We have to liberate liberate our minds first, bro. Otherwise, nigga, we liberate our physical. How are you going to liberate your physical if your mind ain't? you just going to recreate another fucking system of oppression as soon as you take out the, the system that was you was hating on in the first place, or the system that was oppressing you, right? And that's why we got to address oppression from a multiple fronts, like we was just saying. There's multiple systems of oppression that we got to address. We got to address how it isn't just racism that is fucking us up, <laughs> You feel me? Like our understandings of gender is inherently rooted in colonialism. Inherently rooted in colonialism and racism. So we got to abolish all that shit, bro. All these white supremacist notions. And we got to develop something revolutionary. So we is, we is working on it ourselves. So we challenge everyone who's listening, everyone who's tapping in. Like, do that work too. Be uncomfortable. Sit in your uncomfortableness, bro. I don't know if that's a word, but sit in your uncomfortableness <laughs> and, and learn and grow with it and read. And we got we got hella episodes for you too. You you gotta you gotta check yourself, especially in a time right now where everybody's like under a microscope and just being able to toss out certain theory will, will have your shit going viral every every single day. But it's like, dog, the application of theory is where the, the real work is it. done. The day to day relationship. <laughs> that's where the real work is done, bro. You feel me? Like, how can we talk about abolition and then? Like, what do we just not embody that in ourselves and in our own relationships? <laughs> I just, I just want to encourage Oakland, you know what I'm saying? Like, if, you, if you're looking for political education, we got it here for niggas. Um, when niggas are allowed to go back outside, we got community learning programs. Like, niggas is here yeah. to be a resource and learn and grow with y'all. And we finna have a call to action, bro. Like, we, we need black niggas to be pulling up and fucking with us. You feel me? That's what we need, bro. And there's going to be opportunity. Right. You know, we've been in the middle of COVID-19. We still in a global pandemic and we've been socially isolating or socially distancing. So we've kept our core team very small just for our own health and the, the community. So if we feed in the houseless black community of West Oakland, you feel me, three times a week, it doesn't make sense for us to have 30, 40 people out there like mm-hmm. we usually do, because that's putting our people at jeopardy, our people who have pre-existing health conditions. Right. Yeah. And that, that's why it's like, bro, this shit is so important to think about racism on multiple fronts. Because what happens if you get hurt at a protest? What hospital are you taking to them? Th- taking them to, <laughs> right? What doctors do we have ready for us? You feel me? What what first aid responders do we have ready for us? And that that does exist in these protests too. Don't get me wrong, but think about King, bro. They said he didn't die from the hospital, or he, he didn't die from the gunshot. He died in the hospital. You know, so we have to think about building these systems, building our own systems for self determination. Not under a capitalist lens, but under a socialist, revolutionary lens. And that shit is so important. And to the folks who aren't in the Bay Area, who don't have access to us, um, 
I mean, you know, you can always follow and tap in and, and I guess like try to use the infrastructure that we built to, to create your own shit. But I would encourage people to tap in with organizations and folks that's been doing the work in their area. Um, and Niggas also, don't got to reinvent the wheel, bro. Yeah. And also anybody else in the Bay, don't just follow us without doing your research. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at look at the communities that niggas have been accountable to um, who they're accountable for. You know what I'm saying? Like, just look, do your research on people, bro. Don't just... Don't follow niggas blindly, bro. Because a lot of niggas will put out a good fucking... Huh? Probably shouldn't be saying that. They tell, they said we shouldn't say following. It's ableist. Blindly is ableist. That's why I said oh, don't yeah. say follow. Don't that's follow why I said, niggas. That's why I said do your research. <laughs> you know? So do your research. Don't See, just, that's, that's accountability in real process. <laughs> don't, don't, just, don't just follow folks because it's so easy. A lot of people talk a good game. Um, and even now, I'm starting to check myself. Somebody reminded me I need to check myself on how I talk because it's so easy to position yourself as the other. Um, so do your research. Do your research on folks. Look at what communities they've been showing up for. Look at the politics they preach and how what they preach aligns with their actions. And motherfuckers need to stay diligent. I'm gonna say this again. If you listen to the whole episode, do not kneel with the police. Do not. Do not trust the police, bro. The you can't be, is not you can't, your friends. You can't be talking about abolish them while simultaneously bending a knee with them. I don't give a fuck if they have a, a suit or if they have their uh, uniform on or off. Don't fuck with the police. And even if the niggas turn their badge and if these niggas not willing to tell you their strategy, they still can't be trusted. A pig Period. is a pig. And honestly, they probably is getting hip to niggas. Like, oh, turn in your badge. Join the movement. <laughs> Why do you think they might be doing that, nigga? Infiltration, nigga. Study COINTELPRO. Study how they, they work as opposition, bro. You feel me? The military is out there. The National Guard is out there. The police is out there. The DEA is out there. All the motherfuckers is pigs, bro. All these motherfuckers is pigs, nigga. Fuck Trump, nigga. Fuck all presidents. Fuck that nigga Obama, too. Hella Black, episode 75.